that's all I need to know. So I, I really, I really don't want people to think that this man is the people's mayor, and he certainly isn't the patient's mayor. And that's part of what we need to say tomorrow. Now, often we have things in politics. Yeah, that statement: politics, politics makes strange bedfellows. Well, this is one of those cases. There's going to be several people up there tomorrow. Period. It's not just going to be us. Um, so be prepared to work nicely with people that sometimes are our foes. And don't always have low-income patients' rights in mind. But the business community is also curious about this. Because if you cut into where we can open up, it's bad. <coughs> Saying, make yourself comfortable. We will be at the planning commission anywhere from one in the afternoon to one o'clock in the morning. Tell our items heard. Anybody that's done activism with me before knows I'm in it for the long haul. I won't be discouraged if they put it to the end of the meeting because they don't want to hear from you. John Avalos, quote unquote, the people's mayor. <laughs> Wow. It's not the patient's mayor. Right now, he mm, is trying to put lively. into law that if there's a cannabis club right next to another cannabis club, that club does not exist. Mm -hmm. 500 yards. Does anybody get what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, no, take, anybody no. want to take out a measuring stick? Okay, you get it? That's inches. That's inches. We are a wall away. Right? We were here first. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. If this goes into place, the green zone, which are the areas where cannabis clubs are allowed to exist in San Francisco, is so small. It takes people who are middle class merchants with real estate agents two years to find a landlord in the green zone. Do you want less cannabis clubs or more? More. Because you want the price to what? Go down. Right. So we're walking into a situation where they're going to try to close. Uh oh. Close everything down. Yep. Right. Yep. And just have what is here. Now John Oblos is taking this on because <laughs> the outer mission has a relatively large green zone. So we have yep. two cannabis clubs in the outer mission that have been approved in one year on one block. We are an organization that is on one block with two cannabis clubs, and we are probably the only patient advocacy organization that is in between two clubs. Has it ever caused us any issue? No. no. I mean, other than the fact that Eric's a jerk, and we all know that. Just walking down the street, don't you feel safer? Remember how this black That alley used to be in a hellhole right there. How many people have been in, in San Francisco more than 10 years in this room? All right, remember Oh, yeah. This oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we're standing in what used to be a peep show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a, in a seedy one. It wasn't tomorrow. And be like, there is no way that we're going to allow our city to be more effective in closing down safe access in San Francisco than the feds. They're, they're, they're basically trying to really close down the map. And this is a sanctuary status city, so we should have more liberal zoning than any city in America. And we don't. And that's got to be our first talking point, mm. you know, is that we are supposed to be the most liberal city huh. in the <laughs> this is, so the outer mission, explain the outer mission and uh, the effect it will have here in, in uh, District 6. Well, the fact that it will have here in District 6 is if John Avalos can get it through, then Jane Kim can get it through, then Campos can get it through. While we hope and pray that these people are literally progressives in their soul, don't count on it, they're politicians. My dad used to always say, a politician is never your friend. Right? Yeah, right? And we're not that stupid. Often they think we are, but we're not. And if it appeases the other the other developers, 
Anybody notice development going up around here? Like, oh, hell yeah. All over the city. Yeah, I've been wondering why they have been Do you arrested. think they make political contributions? Yeah. yeah. Big ones. Okay. So while the cannabis community is called this big billionaire community, yeah. we're not like the developer community. We do not have untold billions of dollars, and we don't have the poll in City Hall that the developers <laughs> currently have. We so could if they'd let Apollos us. Apollos kicks the ball into the court and gets us through through the outer mission. It's going to come right through to the inner mission. We had already problems with a club that tried to open up with Latino HIV services in the, in the inner mission. We had the business district go up against them, right? So tomorrow's a good way to start kicking some serious butt. It's like our medical cannabis dispensaries always help our neighboring businesses. Do you think the corner stores get a little bit more businesses? Well, yeah. <laughs> the restaurants said, hey, you might want to call up Matt Gonzalez and tell him that the cannabis community right now is not having a good time with John Avalos, for the Louder Mission, he ran for mayor yeah, against yeah, David yeah. Chu, right. who I'm going to have a conversation with late this evening. The people here, good. He had good. no good. idea what was going on. David Chu is a good politician as oh, far yeah. as medical cannabis like goes. It. Is he always great on every other issue? No, he's a little bit more of a moderate. Group are going to be a little bit more conservative about what they say tomorrow. We're not conservative. We are not beholden to any lobbyists. We're going to get up there and say, this is a sanctuary city. You are not going to do this over my dead body. Oh, yeah, it was my friend's dead bodies that we built this law on. We have nothing for because uh, the, their guarantee of low-income units in their development has not materialized and then the, the tax base that uh, was that we were promised to fund schools and everything for the sales of all of the high rises by Lenar that they got their things they haven't been selling their um, the units they're just sitting there empty so not only the loans are not getting paid for that, these properties and their Chinese banks so the Chinese banks are now pulling their loans behind Lennar for the housing development out, you know, where they moved all the low-income people and said, after we build it, you can come back in. Now they're not building that because Lennar is defaulting on their loans to the Chinese banks because they're not able to sell the big high-rise condos. And that's big business. Yes. <laughs> big banks. One of the biggest things in reefer madness is that, oops, there goes the neighborhood, right? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That is crazy. We have statistics that prove that crime goes down when our business is open. Really basic city planning ones, restaurants cluster. So can you imagine if the city said a restaurant couldn't open up to a restaurant next door to another restaurant? Well, I think they do that. They're allowed to do How that. about a liquor store opening up next to another liquor store? Or a bar? Yeah. That's everywhere. That's everywhere. So why are we being treated any differently? We'll apologize to us later. So do you see what I'm saying? So one of the things is restaurants cluster. Uh, you don't tell a taqueria not to open right across right the street from another one. And what does this do for you as a patient? You want the prices to go down, right? You want quality. You want a fair market. You want... The, our businesses from our community be treated like any other business. I have a stupid question. Oh, sure. sure. Why are there like three Walgreens and like two, there's not two blocks of each other? I know, and they're the same three company. Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many Walgreens. Personally, why, I mean, a chiropractor can open up next to another chiropractor. Uh, a natural oh, herb. There you go. We're all in a freaking row, so I mean, Right across from A50 Bryant. Right. They put a moratorium on opening up massage places of all things. Any type of healing business 
so you seem to want to put a moratorium on it. Well, what's, what is That's good information what's, what's to have. They're trying to keep their monopoly in there. They want to figure, so this they, is they is want us to heal their way. Yeah. This, this is a good time to be anti-monopoly and to talk about we don't want a cap. We don't want a course of monopoly in San Francisco, but I think right. starting off with this is a sanctuary city. 52% of all Americans are for cannabis. So even the people that are moving into those play those uh, big glass uh, and steel towers in the sky Will you make that point are uh, probably pro-cannabis. Safety. The neighborhood groups say that we bring bad people to their neighborhood, oh. et cetera. The truth is that we provide human surveillance. I mean, let's look outside here. How many guards do you think are right out here? Human yeah, eyes. Yeah, there's a guard here. there with a badge. Picnic is sleeping, sleeping on the corner. Look. Look. As you say, they probably well, don't like our clothes. Yeah, well, what we're security security is our clothes are ugly to them. Safety. Do cannabis <laughs> commerce bring safety to the San Francisco neighborhood? Lock cannabis clubs from opening within 500 feet of each other. So, in other words, that's like next door. So it's an anti-clustering move. And you need to be clear that it's starting in the outer mission. And the reason why is because two clubs were approved on the same block. It's very important for us as Access of Love to say our patient advocacy organization meets in between two dispensaries on one block that was one of the dirtiest, filthiest blocks in the city. And we feel that all three of us, all three of us, you know, really spark Access of Love have improved the value of this block incredibly, right? is the legal phrase that I want to hear out of a few mouths tomorrow is wars of monopoly. I want to hear sanctuary city. I want to hear I want affordability and quality of medicine in San Francisco and that San Francisco should lead the nation, not be the farthest behind.